Yeah, the motion has been made regarding the September 19 minutes, and it has been seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? The motion carries. Uh, correspondence before us tonight is a letter from C. Peebles regarding the Funny Farm uh, site plan. Uh, and before we get into old business, I did want to welcome to our board Jim Hubner, who is a newly appointed uh, member of the planning board. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for uh, getting uh, up to speed so quickly uh, in preparation for tonight's meeting. Happy to have you here. Uh, and just briefly, I did want to send out our best to Jack Keneally, who uh, is um, home, uh, and we all wish Jack and his family the best. Um, the first item on our agenda tonight is the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust Office Site Plan. The Land Trust is requesting site plan review to renovate the existing vacant building located at 330 Ocean House Road into an office for the Land Trust. Section 19-9 Site Plan Review Public Hearing. Uh, at this point, I would ask the applicant to come forward and especially if there are changes since we've last met, if you could highlight those and just bring us up to date on the project. Oh, Barbara. Um, I, two things. One is that I have reviewed um, the minutes and everything else from the last meeting, so I feel I'm totally up to date on the project. And the second is my husband's been extremely involved. He's been on the board of the land trust. However, um, and I'm willing to recuse myself if everybody wants me to. However, I do not feel in the least bit prejudiced and feel I can make a fair and impartial decision. It's up to you. Uh, I have full faith that you could review this as any other project. And I think the standard is really whether you have a financial interest uh, in the project. Um, there's two standards. One is um, whether it's uh, a conflict of interest, which would be a financial interest, but there could also be bias. And I think uh, Mrs. Schenkel is asserting that she has no bias. So I think this merits any further discussion, but thank you for raising it. With that, uh, Chris Franklin. Uh, good evening. Uh, Chris Franklin from the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. I'm the executive director. Uh, there are uh, no uh, major changes to the plan as we have presented it thus far, no major uh, developments. We have a uh, contract in hand from uh, LP Murray to do the site work, uh, which we are reviewing, and we are reviewing bids from and anticipating bids from uh, local contractors who are going to be helping us with the project. Uh, obviously, waiting for approval before we are able to, uh, to move forward on that, but uh, a lot of excitement building around impending. Uh, move to our new office and we're very excited and uh, here to answer any questions uh, for the actual uh, would you like the site plan introduced again as we did at the last meeting just uh, just changes right yeah if there are any changes I think is all we're interested in hearing about now and it sounds like there aren't any no substantive changes. okay no. Uh, we actually have a public hearing scheduled for this evening yeah. so why don't we let you sit down I'll open it up for a public hearing and then if the board has any further questions of you or any of your uh, okay. consultants, we can address them then. Okay. Uh, the public hearing was scheduled tonight uh, for the site plan, so I will now open it for public comment. And I don't see any uh, people in the room who are planning to speak on this. Uh, so, Maureen, are you going to retrieve somebody or? Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, given that, I will now close the public hearing. And I would invite any members of the board, if there are any questions, uh, please let me know. This project has been reviewed uh, by us in workshop and in the, the prior hearing, and has also been reviewed by town staff. And in the memorandum, uh, town staff has indicated that they did not see any particular issues or problems with this application. I mean, to the contrary, it sounds like a great project, and I, for one, am very enthusiastic about approving it tonight. Um, if there are no questions, I am happy to ask for a motion. Uh, Pete, uh, excuse me, Paul. Mr. Chair, a uh, motion for the board to consider uh, findings of fact. Uh, the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust is proposing to convert an existing building located at 330 Ocean House Road to office space 
which requires review under Section 19-9, Site Plan Regulations. The application substantially complies with Section 19-9, Site Plan Regulations. <clears throat> Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust to convert an existing building located at 13, uh, excuse me, 330 Ocean House Road to office space be approved. The motion has been made and Barbara Schenkel has seconded it. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? The motion carries unanimously. Congratulations and thank, thank you. you. All right, the next item on our agenda is the high school turf field. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review of a proposed turf field to be constructed on the site of an existing athletic field located behind Cape Elizabeth High School. The site plan is proposed in two phases. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Uh, at this point, I would ask the applicant to come forward and highlight any changes that have been made to the project since our last meeting. And then we will have a public hearing tonight, although it doesn't appear that it will be a long one. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're following up our submission um, from last month. Um, there were some issues raised or questions raised in a letter dated to Maureen O'Meara from the town. Uh, Town engineer, um, so we addressed that in our supplemental um, submission, and we added a uh, installation of a four by six utility shed on the plans that were given out in the packets of the sub supplemental submission. Um, and so we're we're um, um, trying to get that, I guess, approved this evening, or answer any questions regarding our supplemental submission uh, for the uh, installation of the uh, athletic. Uh, the um, artificial turf athletic field and uh, a second phase of bleachers and a uh, snack shed down at the athletic field behind the high school. Okay, thank you. Why don't we uh, open it up for the public hearing and then if there are questions we can come right back to you. At this point if I will open it up, uh, the turf field application up for a public hearing. Uh, Seeing that there are uh, no commentators tonight, I will now close the public hearing. Uh, and at this point, uh, if any members of the board have questions, uh, why don't we uh, begin our discussion? Paul. Question probably directed towards Maureen. Are there any parking requirements for a field? There are parking requirements for the field. However, this is an existing field, and the parking demand for that field would have been factored into the last site plan approval where the high school was slightly expanded. This applicant is not proposing to do anything that would uh, require more parking than the original field required. Okay, so even though there's bleachers where there haven't been bleachers before, that doesn't trigger anything? In theory, the bleachers are accommodating people who are already attending the games. Okay. Um, I can tell you that when the parking calculation for the school complex was done, and it was a calculation that included all the parking at the elementary, the middle, and the high school, uh, what was really driving that calculation was uh, the assembly space. Mm -hmm. And I doubt that this field would be used at the same time that they would be having major events in the school using the, the cafetorium and those other spaces. So um, we take a, a lot of advantage of the shared parking concept when we use that um, school campus calculation. Thank you. Barbara. Um, there, and I, don't, I couldn't find any place where this was resolved. There's been some concern about the uh, proximity of the of the bleachers to the parking lot related to snow removal. Have you resolved that with the town at all? 
Um, no, we haven't. So that's but the, 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 the positioning of the bleachers is going to be subject to town approval. That was in the uh, uh, memo from Maureen that was in the package just now. All that is going to be decided by the town. Oh, okay, so when you, during the second phase. Is, yeah, the second phase, you know, that obviously the resolved. second phase is not, all the plans aren't completed for that. We threw that on here to get that approved. But the positioning of that will be done with the public works director when that happens, fine. whenever that may happen. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, Maureen, could you just speak to that issue briefly? I just want to make sure I understand what it is would be approving tonight if we left that condition in as drafted. The public works director has concerns about the placement of the bleachers, and, and he has basically three concerns. One is there's underground utilities, there's a, a, which are actually two concerns. The, the underground utilities, which is a Vortechnix stormwater control unit, and there's also an underground uh, sewer line there. And his second issue is with um, the ability to plow snow. Well, the way the bleachers are structured is there's a lot of open space underneath them. And as long as the, the, the peer supports for the bleachers are not put in the exactly wrong place, there should be an opportunity to accommodate snow storage and avoid those utilities. So what uh, we tried to do with the approval is instead of asking the applicant to go back and revise their plans and get much more detailed information, we just came up with this approach where prior to actually constructing the bleachers, the applicant would lay out where the footings for the bleachers are going to go and they would have to get the approval of the public works director to make sure they're not opening up the sewer line or eliminating the access to the Vortechnics unit or putting a pier in such a way that the plow is never going to be able to put snow in there. Okay. Are folks comfortable with that approach? Are there any other questions? Does anybody have a motion then for the board to consider? Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a site plan review of a proposed turf field concession building and bleaches to be constructed on the site of an existing athletic field located behind Cape Elizabeth High School which requires review under section 19-9. Bleaches are proposed to be located over existing underground utility structures. The concession building and the coach's box are part of phase two and will, be likely, will, will likely require electricity. The application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of a proposed turf field concession building and bleachers to be constructed on the site of an existing athletic field located behind Cape Elizabeth High School be approved subject to the following conditions. One, the public works director approved the proposed location of the footings for the bleacher system prior to installation that the applicant provide the code enforcement officer a plan for extending electricity to the coach's box and concession stand prior to application for an electrical permit. Okay, the motion has been made. Is there a second? Seconded by uh, Peter Hatem. Any further discussion? Yeah. I just did want to point out that the applicant included the phase two plans at our request uh, with the idea that we would be able to view the entire application in one uh, hearing. Uh, so the condition that we've included in there, I think, makes a lot of sense, given that they may not get to the bleachers uh, immediately. Uh, so I appreciate them bringing those plans to us for, for this um, application process. All right, all those in favor of the motion? It passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Under new business tonight, uh, we have the Funny Farm Site Plan Conditional Use Permit. Uh, Scott Rockwell is requesting site plan review and a conditional use permit 
to operate a daycare facility for up to 43 children located at 119 Old Ocean House Road. The daycare is currently under operation without obtaining the necessary local approvals. The application will require site plan review under Section 19-9 and conditional use review under Section 19-5-5. At this point, I would ask uh, Mr. Rockwell to come forward and introduce the project. Just as a reminder to the board tonight, we are considering primarily the issue of completeness. Uh, yes. Uh, are you expecting we're someone? We're running very uh, much ahead of schedule here, and I'm expecting uh, Tom Emery from Land Use Consultants to arrive with the <laughs> backdrop. Um, uh, well, I can make an introduction now, or if you uh, wanted to take a recess to catch up to the agenda. Um, well, why don't you uh, introduce the project, sure. and we will not hold you to uh, every last de minute detail of the, the project, but it would be helpful for us to keep things moving along. Sounds good to me. And our town planner will uh, help you out, post up the plans behind you. So to the extent you want to refer to them, you're, you're welcome to do so. My plan this evening was to introduce myself, uh, give a little bit of a history about the project, sure. and take it to a point where I could then turn it over to uh, Tom Emery, um, who would then describe any of the uh, proposed changes or uh, improvements that are necessary for the project. As uh, you know, I was already introduced as Scott Rockwell, and together with my wife Lisa, we both run and operate the uh, Funny Farm Child Care Center uh, on Old Ocean House Road. Uh, we do come to the planning board this evening having already completed our required submission, uh, or at least we feel that it was complete. Haven't heard to the contrary. Uh, and uh, seek uh, site plan approval and to resecure uh, our conditional use approval. Uh, I say resecure, we did have that approval back in 97, but as a condition of that approval, we needed to have our site plan approved. <clears throat> I would like to take this opportunity uh, first to thank uh, the town and especially uh, town planner Maureen O'Meara and code enforcement officer Bruce Smith uh, for their patience and guidance uh, as we worked uh, to expedite our submission uh, soon after recognizing we did not have our site plan approved as a condition of the zoning board approval back in 97. Uh, <clears throat> at that time concurrently while we sought approval of the facility to change our status from a day nursery to a child care center, according to the um, zoning uh, ordinance. We uh, converted the barn as a, on our property and the L to classrooms and secured the appropriate permits uh, from the town uh, fire department, state fire marshals, and licensing authorities uh, to operate a child care center at that time for up to 43 children. A brief summary of our operations uh, is as follows. Uh, we do operate, uh, our hours are of operation are from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. weekdays year-round. Uh, we, we do have a toddler program that generally serves 10 to 12 uh, uh, children ages up to three years old, and a preschool program serving approximately 16 uh, three to five-year-olds, and an aftercare program serving elementary school age children. Uh, we do have two, three, and five-day full and half-day programs uh, which operate at the same time. And as a result, uh, that enables us to be able to stagger parking in order to meet uh, traffic concerns, uh, which were um, really the only concern brought up at our prior uh, visit to the zoning board. We do utilize uh, indoor classrooms, uh, two of which that we constructed back in 97 and 98 after seeking approval at that time. Uh, <clears throat> two playgrounds outside and playing fields, as well as uh, the proximity of our property to the whale bat, uh, nature trails, and uh, that allows us to take children on uh, nature hikes and uh, for exploration. When we uh, first established our day nursery back in uh, 1994, 
We utilized the play yard that we had set up for our own children in the front of the building, or in the front yard, and I'll point that out uh, here in a, in a few minutes as I orient the project here. Um, <clears throat> and uh, ever since uh, that point, that uh, particular play yard served us uh, for about five or six years. Um, getting back to when we first moved in and started the, the, uh, the business at our property, we wanted to, uh, one of the main goals of our business, or running a business in our, out of our home, uh, was to maintain the character of the old farm structure that we uh, purchased and uh, to minimize any ex exterior alterations um, you know, or by minimizing any ex exterior alterations we were able to achieve that goal. Um, we were able to use existing driveways and parking areas in order to meet the demands uh, of, of our business uh, traffic as well as uh, for our residential needs. Since our first visit to the Zoning Board in 97, <clears throat> the only uh, substantial change that was actually made uh, for the plan that we actually presented at that point in time, uh, outside of non-residential or landscaping um, changes that we did on, uh, from a personal uh, interest, uh, was to move the playground from the front of the yard to the rear uh, play fields that we had uh, been using as uh, just you know, uh, open fields. Um, that way we were able to further meet our goals in minimizing the impact uh, of the business use on the property. And uh, to utilize the site a little bit better by keeping uh, playground away from traffic and away from the roadside uh, for any, from any potential hazards. Um, not seeing Tom at this point in time, I guess I could take a minute uh, to orient the planning board uh, to the project. This particular plan that you folks all have a copy of, um, it, one of the smaller versions of this, um, but the property is located at 119 Old Ocean House Road, uh, just on the, <coughs> the west side of Old Ocean House Road, diagonally across from the entrance to Shore Acres, Trundy Road. Um, uh, miss, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Rockwell. Uh, one of the issues that we have to deal with tonight is completeness, and it appears like that will be fairly non-controversial. To the extent members of the board have questions on that issue that you can't address, I'm willing to take a break and sure. wait for Mr. Emery. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but if it does, we can try to accommodate you. I mean, okay. it's, not, it's just one of those things. He's not here. Um, but it may be that we can get by without him, without his uh, participation. We'll just wait and see. Sure. Uh, and if we get into substantive issues and we need to wait for Mr. Emery, you know, I imagine he'll be here soon. So uh, if it's okay with you, I, I just as soon talk about the issue of completeness. I don't, you shouldn't feel like you have to, um, you know, keep oh. it going for Tom to get here. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, uh, you're doing great. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it to the planning board to okay. direct me. How's that? Uh, sure. Uh, w the uh, first issue is completeness. Uh, and uh, do any members of the board have, excuse me, do any members of the board have questions about that? The town memo uh, indicated there were no issues on that front. So uh, do we have a motion, Barbara? Motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Harvey Farm to operate a daycare facility for up to 43 children located at 119 Old Ocean House Road, which requires site plan review and a conditional use permit be deemed complete. The motion has been made. Is there a second? Seconded by Peter. Any further discussion on completeness? All those in favor of the motion? Okay. The application is deemed complete. So you're batting a, a thousand. Uh, um, do, we, do we want to talk about a site walk? Yeah, why don't we talk I'll about stay whether here a, while I'm batting a thousand. <laughs> why don't we talk about whether a site walk uh, or a hearing should be scheduled? What are people's thoughts on a site walk? Barbara? I have a question. 1997 is almost 10 years ago. Yes, it is. And, and I'm sort of confused about why you're here now. I'm assuming it's because you're putting in a new septic tank 
in a new disposal field and you're required to be here yeah. to complete what should have been complete 10 years ago. Yeah, it, sure. Is that it, correct? I think that's right. And maybe, because I know, I believe at a workshop, Maureen, and I can't recall if you were there, but Maureen did speak to this issue. So if it's okay with the applicant, would, would it be okay if the town planner weighed in on why we're here? I'd be happy to answer. Okay. Uh, the applicant uh, originally received approval for a, what we call a daycare home, which is uh, for ca caring for up to six children. And it's not something that needs planning board review. It just needs zoning board approval. Uh, the applicant then elected to expand their business to more than six children, which comes under the definition of a daycare facility. A daycare facility is a conditional use and it requires site plan review by the planning board. At the time, the applicant initiated the condition. And if you need, if you need to go before both the zoning board and the planning board, the uh, ordinance says you have to start with the zoning board. So the planning board, the applicant initiated their review with the zoning board for their conditional use review and then failed to proceed to the planning board for site plan review. In the intervening almost 10 years, the ordinance has been revised so that now uh, it, when an applicant needs both a conditional use permit and site plan review to streamline the review, both of those reviews are done by the planning board. So the applicant has expanded their business without the necessary local approvals and is now coming before the board to correct that violation. And if they do not obtain site plan approval by the planning board, the code enforcement officer is going to close the business. But my, excuse me, my view uh, on the history is it's largely irrelevant. We're here to review the application for a site plan review and a conditional use permit. Um, so I, I believe that's where we are. Does that answer your question? Yes, okay. thank you. I, I wasn't at that workshop. So no oh, please, okay. So thank you. Uh, it was helpful to have it explained again, so thank you. Um, thank you, Mark. Look, I guess, Dave, my question, you, you had asked about a public hearing, and I am guess I'm, my question is the opposite. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't we have a public hearing? I, I agree. I would think we'd n need to schedule this for a public hearing. And then, uh, okay, then the more complicated question is do we need to? Do we need a site walk? walk? I mean, personally, I don't feel like I do only because I'm familiar with the site, but I don't want to take away any uh, opportunity for someone who wants to go look at it. Plus, I don't, I'm not sure that as a board, are we going to be looking at any unique issues um, that we want to see as a group, I guess. I, I agree with you, Peter, but again, if there's a member of the board that would like to go out there, the other option would be to Maureen if you are willing to show a board member around. But, but does anybody want to have a, an official site walk? I'm familiar with it. Okay. Barbara? Uh, no, I, I'm not familiar with it. However, the business has been operating for 10 years with a license, and the only change that I can see on it is a new septic tank, which is probably a good thing, and a, and a leaching field, I guess. Are you putting in a new leaching field? It, it, well, these play areas existing. I'm sorry? Existing. These are existing. It's actually in progress right now. It's, it's a new system being installed. Okay. Because it did alter, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, because there's an alteration of the use of the property as part of the, uh, this application that has to be included with, the, um, <clears throat> with this application in order to uh, demonstrate that we meet the the, uh, the waste uh, water requirements. I'm sorry, I was just conferring with the town planner, uh, so I missed the last uh, explanation there. But I, I, I'm prepared to move this to a public hearing and conclude tonight's uh, discussion of the project, unless there are any other questions. I, I I'm just not seeing anything of monumental concern being raised now that we can't take care of uh, when we have the uh, meeting next month, when we have the public hearing. Sounds fair. Is that, is that okay with the other members? Maureen, if I decide that I think I need to see the site, could I give you a call and just Absolutely. make arrangements to go out with you? Sure. We can Thank accommodate you. pretty much any time. Um, I can work that out with Maureen as far as, I'm, I'm not sure of that exact procedure if that's to be a. It would schedule. not be appropriate for you to personally lead a planning board member around and have private conversations with her, but right. you know, 
if she wanted to just drive through, certainly I'd be more than happy to go with you. That's fine. Well, if I can just if I can just drive through, I don't need you to drive through and not stop. Just drive through. <laughs> yeah. It's if you at see least her, see you the can't talk to her. <laughs> I'll, I'll greet her as a. Well, you may not. If I'm just going to drive through, you don't even know that I'm. You need to know that I'm there. Okay. Actually, and I, and I think if I think that might be the best way if everybody's in agreement because I don't know the site. Okay. Uh, then do we have a motion regarding the hearing then, uh, David? Be it further ordered that the above application be tabled to the November 21st, 2006 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Motion has made, been made and seconded by Barbara. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? It carries unanimously. So we will see you back here with Tom Emery uh, on November 21st. I don't know if he was following that for <laughs> Good. So thank you very much. Very good. Uh, uh, okay, uh, it appears we uh, are through with our agenda for this evening. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded? Mr. Chair. Oh, oh yes. Paul. The next scheduled planning board meeting public hearing. public hearing is on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Peter and I were having a side discussion that appears both of us will not be here. Should we check with the remainder of the board to see if we have Ooh. adequate Cape, Cape schools are closed then. And, and whether or not we need to potentially move the meeting. Uh, it would be helpful if we had at least four of us here uh, <laughs> at the next meeting. Uh, I will be here. What about I will be here. I, I will be here too. Lord willing, the crick don't rise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, it's, that's, a, okay. that's that's four. Uh, could we actually change it? To this late date. This isn't too late to change. And Dave, I'm not sure. I just didn't want a problem. Well, my only concern is, at most, we're going to have four, and if one of the four of us, for whatever reason, can't make it, uh, though I know the week before, I can't attend. I will not be here. Okay. You, you could move it to the following Monday, which is November 27th, if you wanted to. Because the council has the chambers on. Well, it's just when you go to the prior week, that Tuesday night, you can meet, but I will be in a different meeting. Oh. Um, <laughs> Tuesday, Monday night is, and, and also, quite frankly, Tuesday night, the 14th, is the school board. They'll have this room. So you won't be in this room. Monday night is, is likely the council meeting, um, unless there's a holiday there. So you're looking at the 27th. It's really hard to move earlier. It's, we keep bumping up into other people having I, the room. I, I can't do it the 27th, but I may be the only person. So, uh, Is everybody else available on Monday the 27th? I should be here. The 28th Quick. is the zoning board meeting. and. Right. And they have the room, and I know at least one board member will be at that meeting, so. Yep, I should be here. Barbara? Yes. Okay. Our company's coming to us. So. so on the 27th, then, we have at least five people that could make it. I, I feel a little bit better about that. Just with, with only four, if somebody's sick or something, then all the applicants aren't able to proceed. Is that okay if we move it to Monday, then the 27th? Do we need a motion for that? I don't think so. I think uh, it's a consensus. Okay, there we go. Uh, so Maureen will take care of getting the appropriate notices on that yes. front. Okay, any f further issues? Ray? Thank you, Paul, for raising that. Uh, and do we have a motion to adjourn? You're, you're so, it. You're oh, we did. Right. And uh, all those in favor? Okay. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. This was an exciting one to take oh, in. Well. So, <laughs> so, so, Maureen, tell me Just about. Uh, so much excitement. Now people, we have nothing. Did you write anything?